The Cat Who Married a Mouse from the Tales of the Brothers Grimm. Once upon a time, a cat made acquaintance with a mouse, and they were together so much that a great love and friendship arose between them, for the mouse was a clever little thing. At last they agreed to marry and dwell together in the same house and be very comfortable. One day during summer, the cat said to his wife, My dear, we must take care to lay in a store for the winter, or we shall die with hunger. You, little mouse, he cannot venture to go about anywhere for fear you should be caught in a trap, but I had better go and see about it. This good advice was followed, and in a few days Tom came safely back with a large jar full of beautiful meat covered with fat, which he had found. They had a long talk about a place in which to hide this treasure, but at last Tom said, I don't know a better place than the church. No one ever thinks of robbing a church. So if we place the jar under the altar and take care not to touch it, then we shall have plenty to eat in winter. So the jar was carried to the church and put in a place of safety. But it did not remain there long. Tom kept thinking of the contents of the jar, and longing so much for a taste that at last he invented an excuse to get away from home. Mousy, he said one day, I've had an invitation from one of my cousins to be present at the christening of her little son who was born a few weeks ago. He is a beautiful kitten, she tells me, gray with black stripes, and my cousin wishes me to be godfather. Oh, yes, go by all means, replied the mouse. But when you are enjoying yourself, think of me. Bring me a drop of the sweet red wine if you can. Tom promised to do as she asked him, and went off as if he were going to see his cousin. But after all, it was not true. Tom had no cousin nor had he been asked to be godfather. No, he went right off to the church and slipped under the table where the jar of meat stood and sat looking at it. He did not look for long, however, for presently he went close up and began licking and licking the fat on the top of the jar till it was nearly all gone. Then he took a walk on the roofs of the houses in the town and at last stretched himself out in the sun and stroked his whiskers as often as he thought of the delicious feast he had had. As soon as the evening closed in, he returned home. Oh, here you are again, said the mouse. Have you spent a pleasant day? Yes, indeed, he replied. Everything passed off very well. And what name did they give the young kitten? Topoff? said Tom quite coolly. Top off, cried the mouse. That is a curious and uncommon name. Is it a family name? It is a very old name in our family, replied the cat, and it is not worse than thieves, as your ancestors were called. Poor little mousy made no reply, and for a while nothing more was said about Tom's cousins. But Tom could not forget the jar of meat in the church, and the thought of it made him long so much that he was obliged to invent another tale of a christening. So he told the little mouse that a lady cat, his aunt, had invited him this time, and that the kitten was a great beauty, all black excepting a white ring round its neck, so he could not refuse to be present. For one day, dear mousy, he added, you will do me this kindness and keep house at home alone? The good little mouse willingly agreed, and Tom ran off, but as soon as he had reached the town, he jumped over the churchyard wall and very quickly found his way to the place where the jar of meat was concealed. This time he feasted so greedily that when he had finished, the jar was more than half empty. It tastes as nice as it smells, said the cat, after his joyful day's work was over and he had had a nice nap. But as soon as he returned home, the mouse asked what name had been given to the kitten this time. Tom was a little puzzled to know what to say, but at last he said, Ah, I remember now. They named it Half Gone. Half Gone? Why, Tom, what a queer name. I never heard of it before in my life, and I'm sure it cannot be found in the register. The cat did not reply and for a time all went on as usual till another longing fit made him rub his whiskers and think of the jar of meat. Mousy, said he one day, of all good things there are always three, 
do you know I've had a third invitation to be godfather? And this time the little kitten is quite black, without a single white hair in its whole body. Such a thing has not happened in our family for many years, so you will let me go, won't you? Top off and half gone are such curious names, Tom, replied the mouse, that they are enough to make one suspicious. Pausing for the train. Top off and half gone are such curious names, Tom, replied the mouse. They're enough to make one suspicious. Oh, nonsense, replied the cat. What can you know about names, staying at home here all day long in your great coat and soft fur, with nothing to do but catch crickets? You can know very little of what men do in the world. Poor little Mousie was silent, and she patiently remained at home during the absence of the greedy, deceitful cat, who this time feasted himself secretly till he had quite cleaned out the jar and left it empty. When all is gone, then one can rest, said he to himself, as he returned home at night quite fat and sleek. Well, Tom, said the mouse as soon as she saw him, and what is the name of this third child? I hope you will be pleased at last, he said. It is named All Gone. All Gone? cried the mouse. That is the most suspicious name yet. I can scarcely believe it. What does it mean? Then she shook her head, rolled herself up, and went to sleep. After this, Tom was not invited to any more christenings. But as the winter came on, and in the night no provisions could be found, the mouse thought of the careful store they had laid up for the winter, and said to the cat, Come, Tom. Let us fetch the jar of meat from the church. It would be such a nice relish for us. Ah, uh, yes, he replied. It will be a nice relish to you, I dare say, when you stretch out your fine little tongue to taste it. So he took himself out of the way, and Mousie went to the church by herself. But what was her vexation at finding the jar still standing in the same place, but quite empty? Then she returned home and found Tom looking as if he did not care, although he was at first rather ashamed to face her. I understand now, said the little mouse quite gently. I can see what has happened. A fine friend you have been to me to deceive me in this manner. When you told me you were going to stand godfather to the three little kittens, you never visited your relations at all. But instead of that, you went to the church three times and ate up all the meat in the jar. I know now what you meant by top off, half gone. Will you be quiet? said the cat in a rage. If you say another word, I will eat you. But the unfortunate mouse had all gone on its lips, and hardly had it come out than the cat made a spring, seized the mouse, and gobbled it up. Now, that's the way of the world, you see. The End